Miniature trees are such a staple for your wargaming tables and your RPG encounters, but I think they're not quite as simple as they first appear. For something that is so ubiquitous and around in many situations, they're actually a little bit more complex than they seem, mainly because there's so many different variations and methods of doing it. So in this video, I'm going to be comparing what I deem like a reasonable budget friendly version of a tree and we're going to compare that to a more expensive version which is using like sea foam and that kind of thing. This is using clump foliage and I reckon it's probably between one and two pound a tree and this is using sea foam which I think is approximately six pound a tree. In the past I have shown you how to make this poor hammer tree which I personally would try and recommend not to make unless it is your only option because money's tight which is fair enough but I've also shown you how to make what I deem like a standard wargaming tree. Now I'll be comparing the two we make in this video to this and we'll talk about the cost as well. But first, you know, let's show you how to make those two different trees. For both of these, we're going to be using the Woodland Scenic Armatures. Now I think they come in a pack of 12 for approximately 10 to 15 pound. That's roughly equivalent in dollars as far as I know, by the way. These armatures, they come in essentially a flat 2D kind of plane. And what they have is like a base that's separate from the main part of the tree. All you do is clip them off and like put them together but they'll often have quite a lot of mold lines on them and some of them actually have like round circular bits where it's actually been on a sprue or something like that they're not particularly clean like that if you do want to tidy them up feel free to just take a knife and do so now them being separated i think is because of like train layouts and stuff like that for us war gamers generally we'll put it on a base so we'll actually glue them together i just use some super glue to glue the tree together and then i use some more super glue to glue that to the base you'll find that there's generally a bit of a gap so to fill in the gap i think i use some das clay but you can use some filler slash spackle or probably like green stuff or whatever the hell you have basically and all i do is just try and fill in the gap and i try and texture it to make it look like it's part of the tree you could actually go up the whole tree and make it as detailed as you like but we're trying to keep things quick and easy here now because of these woodland scenic armatures being in like 2d plane they're quite flexible though the tree trunks so you have to like manipulate them in a way to cause like a tree shape now obviously trees are 3d and these are only 2d so what you want to do is try and like twist them to make it look as natural as possible don't be afraid to cut off some of the branches if that's what you want to do that looks completely normal as well for this video i'm doing two of each and then all I do is I've glued this onto a 60mm MDF base. I'm going to bevel the edge of that because I want it to blend into whatever I put it on. Just use a blade to do that. Cover the base in PVA and cover it in sand. That process is the same for both of the trees and this is where they split off. For the clump foliage budget version of this tree, what I'm actually going to do is obviously let the PVA dry and then I'm going to take a brush and some brown paint and I'm going to paint the entire thing, the base and the tree. Now you could once that's dry dry brush it but i'm lazy and didn't want to do that and then very simply i'm going to use some hobby it's called hobby tack which is hard for me to say but you can use uh, eileen's tacky glue i believe which is sort of like a budget version of it but the hobby tack is actually woodland scenic's product and it's designed for this purpose it is incredibly incredibly tacky it'll stick to your fingers and like it becomes really annoying to get off and all you do is you brush a little thin layer onto the edges of your uh, branches or wherever you want this to go and then you've got to wait a little bit and it goes from being white to sort of transparent and that's when you know it's it's maximum tackiness that for me took somewhere between 15 minutes to maybe like an hour and then quite literally i take some clump foliage which in this case is just woodland scenics medium green and i you literally just put it in a tub and dunk your branches into it like that sounds very simple and it is very very simple and that's one of the good things about it once you take it out, there'll be some bits that aren't properly attached to the branch because the clump foliage is sort of stuck together in itself in clumps. And so what you need to do is basically give it a shake so you it doesn't all fall off, but the bits that aren't attached to anything come off. And what I did is I left it overnight and even overnight some bits just sort of came off. Anything where it's like just dangling by a thread, you know, just take that off. Importantly here, you do want to seal this uh, tree with using the clump foliage. So the best thing to do is get maybe like some watered down PVA and a bit of flow aid or dish detergent so it like actually soaks into this. Put it in a spray bottle and spray your tree. Make a right mess of it, spray the tree. You really want it to like all come together. It's come foliage and you want it to all stick together. We're not trying to get the come foliage really to stick to the tree. We're trying to get the come foliage to like harden up and become more rigid rather than soft. 
let that dry overnight, put a bit of static grass on the base, and that tree's pretty much done. And the cost for that is actually pretty low, excluding stuff like sand and the paint, because I presume you probably already have that. It's the woodland scenic sand, which is the glue, which is sort of, you've, there's two different options for you, and then the cunt foliage, which is, in the UK, you can get a decent sized bag for like five pound. So I reckon easily you can get 12 trees for approximately one to two pound a tree. And it actually, I think, looks more than fine. And I could imagine that on a table very easily, but we'll compare it to the more luxury sea foam tree now. So this process is pretty much the same as what we did. We glued all the tree together, shape it the way we did. I used the dust to fill in the gap and I put sand on the base. But what I do then is instead of painting it up, we then add the sea foam. Now here I'm going to be using super glue and a activator. And an activator is a spray that when it touches super glue, it like dries much quicker than like it drying normally. And super glue normally dries quite quickly anyway, so you can imagine it is quicker. So the way that I did this, it's either put glue on the branch of the sea foam or and then spray the tree or the other way around. Don't think it really matters too much to do whatever's comfortable, but you do need an activator. If you was just there with the super glue, you would be there an awfully long time. Now the sea foam probably cost me about eight 18 pound for a big box and I reckon you could very easily do 10 trees with the box that I used. I think I maybe I did two trees and I've used maybe a, a less than a fifth. But yeah, gluing the sea foam branches onto the branches of the tree, very delicate process. One tree took me approximately 25 minutes. Now an alternative glue you could use those. I've seen, I think I've seen Geek Gaming, Glue KPS, use a uh, contact adhesive. So what you do with that is you put the glue on both the branch and the sea foam and it'll connect together a little bit easier but you either need super glue and an activator or maybe the contact adhesive one thing to note with these sea foam branches they're very delicate though they can break off reasonably easily so one way to firm that up is what we're going to do next which is to spray the whole thing in brown now i did that outside so i'm not going to show you any footage of that because it's cold and i didn't want to take all the camera and stuff like that so don't hate me but spray the whole thing brown and then we come straight to adding the foliage on the tree. To get the flock onto the tree though, there's a couple of different options. We have the blue tag repositionable glue, which in the UK I think is about eight pound. In the US you get access to the 3M spray glue. Both of them are good options, but a little bit pricey. Now I do see, I think for Geek Gaming again, Luke APS, the man, the legend, he has used a yacht varnish, which I have also used in the past, and it actually works pretty well and can possibly be a bit cheaper, so just keep that in mind. For the video, I'm using the blue tight repositionable glue. All we're going to do is spray where we want the leaves to go, which is obviously on the edges of the tree branches. We don't want it to be on the, the main trunk. So just spray that. I sprayed this in the house to get it on the on the camera and I completely ruined my desk because I got it all over my desk and my desk is all, all sticky still because it's blue type repositionable glue. It stays sticky. Get a, get a big tub and in this case I'm going to be using just one kind of flock which is Woodland Scenic Splendid Turf simply because it's got a nice variety of different greens and it's the one that I use on all my trees. You could use like darks and mediums and lights and coarser flock and all that kind of stuff but I just went with simple here because even though this is an expensive tree you know, I don't want it to be super, super, super expensive. All you do is sprinkle that over your branches then and then tap it so all the loose bits comes off. And what you want to do is take a dry brush, and I mean a brush that is dry rather than a, a dry brush for painting, and just go onto the trunk of the branches and just knock off any flock that's there where it shouldn't be. Again, I did actually seal this with some watered down PVA. I'm not sure it made that big of a difference, but I did. And then I put some uh, static grass on the base and that's basically the trees done. So now let's actually compare the two. Cost for these two and we'll also compare what I deem the standard tree. For comparing all of these trees I'm going to ignore the poor hammer tree because if you can avoid it I would avoid it and the one step up from that would be this kind of tree which obviously I'll show you pictures of as well which is the clump foliage tree. But really I think this kind of clump foliage tree actually is probably a nice little balance between budget and aesthetics. It's not very expensive and you could improve the cost by making your own uh, armature by using like wire. So let's say you've got your wooden scenic armatures though you need a glue. The two glue options are the hobby tack and the Eileen's tacky glue and then you need your clump foliage. You could use different versions of it. This is just mid green from Woodland Scenics. And you know what? It actually looks pretty decent. I, I can't lie. It's not perfect. There's some bits where really I probably could do with going back over it a little bit and then maybe re-dipping it in some places. But it looks fine. 
and for the price as i said it's probably about let's call it one pound fifty a tree or one dollar fifty a tree and you'd get 10 for that amount easily probably actually 12. so in total i think you're looking here at about 18 pound uk probably about 18 dollars us and you'd get 10 to 12 trees which i honestly think is pretty damn good I will leave a link to all of the armatures and everything that I've used in the description below if it's something you want to like pick up. Keep in mind if it's Amazon I probably get like a commission based on that. And then let's talk about the tree that I didn't make in this video. And this is the medium mid-range tree that I think is like the standard tree. And what I like about this is it's still the Woodland Scenics armatures. It's actually a different armature than the one I've used in this video but it's a Woodland Scenics armature. And then the main difference is the substructure of the tree. Now in this case I think I'm using rubberized horse there's other options though, you can use uh, cocoa fibre, you can also use like a green cotton wool mesh that I think Woodland Scenic sell, you can use cotton wool. Now there is an option here by Geek Gaming, Luke APS, they've done like a moss sheet which I actually think looks good and I think just putting the moss sheet on it might be the step up from the budget option. But I think this is sort of like your standard tree, so you get a you get your, your armature you get a substructure, then you need the brown spray paint. So you've got to factor in the cost of the spray paint really because you might not have that already. You could maybe get away with black and then do it with a brush, but whatever, you really need, I think you really need a brown spray paint. Once you've sprayed it brown though, then you're, you're back with the glue option. So you either use the uh, 3M stuff or you use the yacht varnish and the flock is exactly the same. The main thing here is that the substructure is generally much cheaper than say the sea foam. The sea foam I think I paid uh, like £18 for a big box of it uh, whereas this stuff is like a couple of quid for a massive amount of it. So I would recommend really as like a standard tree but it's also relatively firm because there's more substructure rather than the fragile sea foam branches. Um, really once you've sealed this you like very rarely gonna like actually damage it so for me the mid-level tree is still a viable option for the standard tree and this is what I was talking about like in terms of problems when it comes to trees for maybe 12 trees you are looking at approximately 40 pound so that's $40 for 12 trees. It can be pretty expensive. And again, I'll leave all the links in the description below, but you just have to keep in mind trees, they seem really simple, but they're actually reasonably expensive. And the last, but almost certainly not least, is the sea foam tree. I think you're probably like me and agree, it, by far it is the best looking tree. Is it suitable for the wargaming table due to its like fragility? I mean, that's for you to decide how, how do you store your trees? Do you transport them? If you're just going to have them at home in like a box, that's relatively like safe. I mean, I'm actually sort of tempted to make a tray where I just have them magnetized and, and I can literally just keep them in a box in the loft and like never let nothing touch them. And in that case, I think the sea foam trees are pretty good. Cost wise, we're looking at maybe like £60 for like 10 to 12 trees again, which is pretty expensive. Now, the cost does decrease if you make more trees <laughs> because you probably have access to the brown spray and the glues and stuff like that. But I, I mean, this is just using one kind of flock, the blended flock from Woodland Scenics, but it does look pretty damn good. I, it's hard to deny that. So for me, the budget version of the tree is fine. If that is all that like, your budget extends to, I wouldn't be too unhappy with that. This, whilst it appears to be like the least fragile. I actually think it's relatively fragile because well, quite frankly a lot of the comfort foliage just sort of separates within itself. I should probably go back in and like seal it again but the tackiness is sort of um, it's not keeping the trees particularly like it's not keeping all the comfort foliage to it. There's little bits of gaps. Very easy to just like maybe add a little bit more but uh, I'd say the disintegration factor is relatively high more than I expected. The standard wargaming tree, um, in this one I've actually probably not done it very well because I've not left a bit of like space in the tree and one thing when I was doing the sea foam tree is that you, you want to leave like gaps, you want the light to shine through it and you want to be able to see through it and it just gives you that sort of more realistic leaf look rather than say this where what I've actually done it just globbed it on and not really thought about it I should have tried to create more like a canopy and a realistic tree structure so you can do a better version of that I mean it would be better if I had um a sort of the, if I used the slightly bigger armatures but 
Um, this for me is still the like it is the standard. I would very much, and I might do this in another video, is simply get a, a hold of the Geek Gaming uh, Moss and just whack that on an armature and call that a day. Now I've seen Geek Gaming. I think he like flocked his, but you could just leave it as that, and that would probably be a really nice like in between version of the trees. And the sea foam stuff is incredible, but expensive. There's absolutely loads of ways to make trees and I've not covered everything here like in I think in my other channel I've done like fir trees and pine trees and all that kind of stuff. Quite frankly there's so much variations you could have on trees that I'm, I'm not going to try and talk about them but I've discussed here some of the like standard ways of making trees so hopefully you enjoyed this comparison and uh, showing you very quickly how to make them. If you did like and subscribe. Uh, thanks to my Patreons I do really appreciate we've had like a reasonable influx there and I, thank you very much. I got some merch. Have a most beautiful day. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.